Right. Well, Sir Watkin Williams Wynne married in um, April 1769 to Lady Henrietta Somerset, daughter of Charles Noel, Duke of Beaufort. And a portrait of the betrothed couple was painted by Sir Joshua Reynolds. Um, this picture is courtesy of the National Museum of Wales. Um, a picture of the couple in Italian costume with masks, very appropriate to Sir Watkins' interests. Henrietta, unfortunately, died in July the same year. But the bereaved husband had a pleasant distraction and the preparations for his coming of age party in 1770. Um, building works first uh, commemorated the event. Um, the great room was built at Wednesday and the park wall erected and restoration took place in Ruabon Church. Well, Sir Watkin did know how to party. Over 15,000 people came to Wednesday Park. Preparations for the feast began in February and three coach loads of cooks were sent from London. Samuel Sidebottom's account book recorded eight gallons of orange juice to make shrub. Wine, brandy, rum, etc. sent to Wednesday. Hams, stains mustard, six table mats for the steward's room, and intriguingly, the old woman's dress, Mr. Carter, the cook, sang ballads in at Wednesday. Paid a man for teaching David to dress horses in ribbon. Um, paid Mr. Wedgwood for earthenware. Poets, music, bells, etc., which included Jack the Turner and three others for dancing music. Welsh singers and Hakin Ellis, the harper. Mr. Priest, musician for four days. Mr. Hackwood, the music's expense of himself and five others to Wednesday. The bill of fare was reproduced in the Gentleman's Magazine. It was truly enormous, as well as huge quantities of meat. There were 70 pies, 60 dozen trout, 108 flounders, 109 lobsters, 125 plum puddings, 144 ice creams, 18,000 eggs, 150 gallons of milk, 60 quarts of cream, 30 bushels of potatoes, 6,000 asparagus, 120 dozen of wine, brandy, rum and shrub, rockwork shapes, landscapes, etc., in jellies, blancmange, etc. Fireworks were provided by Domenico Giordani. The total cost was over £1,600. Um, in the year before the coming of age, a portrait had been commissioned by, um, from Sir Joshua Reynolds. Um, and because Henrietta wasn't there, um, he it, it was, it was painted with his mother. Um, <coughs> this is in the National Portrait Gallery. So Watkin married again in um, December 1771. Uh, his second wife was Charlotte Grenville, daughter of the former Prime Minister George Grenville, and she was a niece of William Pitt. She was very suited to the role. She was elegant, motherly in temperament, um, sociable, but she still possessed the tough organisational skills required for managing multiple households. Her letters to Samuel Sidebottom show a sound grasp of estate and domestic administration. They had eight children, six of whom survived. There were three sons, Watkin, Charles and Henry, and three daughters, Henrietta, Francis and Charlotte. And there is Charlotte with three of the children, um, painted by Sir Joshua Reynolds. And um, that is in the National Museum of Wales. Well, like most of the gentry, Sir Watkin had a London house. His first one was in Grosvenor Square, and in 1772, he purchased 20 St. James's Square for 18,500 pounds from Lord Bathurst, and he spent a further 30,000 on renovation. I need a fortification before the next bit. <coughs> Right, um, this photograph is of the inside of the house um, now, um, taken by Paul McMullen. 
the architects were the very best, Robert and James Adam. Bills survive for hinges, screws, sash window fittings, latches, brass drawer handles, locks, mouse wire and fly wire to keep pests out of the pantries, and Westmoreland slate for the roof. And there are bills for repairs to the roofs on either side, which were damaged by the renovation. Um, the bricklayer's bill is incredibly detailed. It's absolutely fantastic for anyone interested in the history of architecture. It explains the construction of the house, the arched drains, um, renovation of the wells, um, alterations to the coach house and stables, the brickwork in the offices and library, um, which had a Venetian window with sliding shutters, and cutting a doorway through to the hot bath. And the house was superbly equipped from the ironing stove in the laundry to the water closet adjoining the stable. The exterior building work was completed by 1775 and May Day was celebrated typically with a musical breakfast. The musicians included Mr Sykes and Mr Noferi. The interior work was absolutely stunning as you can see. Marble chimney pieces were decorated by Josiah Wedgwood and Bartoli. Antonio Zucci painted some of the rooms which are described in the accounts. For the ceiling of the great drawing room, six panels representing the triumph of Venus, the triumph of Galatea, Diana going out to the chase, the judgment of Paris and the meeting of Bacchus and Ariadne. In the ceiling of the music room, there were further classical scenes from Virgil's eclogues and a picture in a panel over the door in the niche representing shepherds and nymphs doing honour to the ashes of Corelli or Handel. In 1775, Nathaniel Dance was paid for painting the Orpheus and two musical pieces over the side door, and Sir Joshua Reynolds for the St Cecilia in the music room, which is thought to be modelled on Mrs Sheridan. The music room was also equipped with chandeliers, music stands and an organ by John Snetzler. The deal included keeping it in tune for the rest of the year and in future at a cost of four guineas. And there is a picture from the Adams um, designs of the music room ceiling in Sir Watkins London House. Um, the book has been edited by Robert Oresco.